This lesson is about simple circuits. Let's talk about voltage. Electrons don't just flow through a wire for no reason. There are two requirements for electrons to flow. First, they have to have somewhere to go. The circuit has to be closed. There also has to be something to push them through the circuit. A battery or a source of potential difference or a voltage source, all the same thing, provides that push. This is sometimes referred to as electric pressure, like the water pressure in a hose that pushes water through it. Let's take a look at a very simple circuit. Here we have a battery connected to a resistor with a few wires. A resistor is a very common electrical component that is used to regulate the amount of current in a circuit. All it does is take electrical energy and convert it into heat. Instead of a resistor, we could have a light bulb in the circuit. This brings us to Ohm's law. The current through a wire is directly proportional to the voltage applied to it. The current through a wire is inversely proportional to the resistance of the wire. When we put these together to form an equation, we find that I equals V divided by R. If we cross multiply, we get V equals I times R. And if we divide both sides by I, we end up with the form of the equation that you'll find on your reference table. R equals V divided by I. They're all the same equation. Use whichever one you like. This last one is on the reference table. Let's take a look at an example. How much current will flow through a 12 ohm resistor when it is connected to a 9 volt battery? We'll start with the equation from our reference table. We can substitute in the 12 ohms and the 9 volts, and we can find that the current would be 0.75 amps. Here's another example. When the light bulb in a flashlight is connected to a 3 volt source of potential difference, a current of 0.4 amps flows through it. What is the resistance of the light bulb? I already mentioned electrical energy. Let's talk a little bit more about that now. When a light bulb is lit, or when an electric motor is running, or when your phone is charging, electrical energy is being used and work is being done. I want to show you where a couple of really important equations come from. You definitely do not need to write this down. Just take note of the final equations that have red boxes around them. Here's the equation we learned a while ago for potential difference. We could rearrange this equation and solve it for work. Here's the equation for current. We could rearrange this equation so it is solved for Q. Now we want to put these together. If Q equals I times T, then W could equal V times I times T. So here's W equals VIT, and here is the form of Ohm's law, V equals IR. If we put these together, we could say that W equals I squared RT. There's that first work equation again, and here's another form of Ohm's law. If we put these two together, we can say that work equals V squared over R times T. We now have three expressions for work, and here they are all together. You will find this equation on your reference table. Let's take a look at an example. An electric hair dryer is plugged into a 110 volt source and draws a current of 17 amps. How much electrical energy does the hair dryer use in one minute? If we made a list of givens, we would see that we know the voltage, the current, and the time. This means we should use the form of the equation W equals VIT. If we plug in our givens and multiply, we'll see that 112,200 joules of work is done 
when this hair dryer runs for one minute. Here's another example. An electric motor with a resistance of 150 ohms uses 1.8 times 10 to the 6 joules of energy in 30 seconds. How much current was flowing through the motor? If you're not sure where to start, make a list of givens to figure out which equation to use. As you know, work is related to power. Power, remember, is the rate at which work is done. Also, we could say that it is the rate at which electrical energy is used. Here comes some more algebra. Remember, you don't have to write down every step. Just write down the conclusion. So power equals work divided by time. That's from months ago. We just learned a series of equations for W. This is going to look silly, but we could take that entire series of equations for W and plug it in to the equation above. This gives us P equals VIT equals I squared RT equals V squared over RT all over T. You may have noticed that each term on the right has a T and we're dividing by T. This really simplifies things. All those T's cancel out and we're left with the equation P equals W over T equals VI equals I squared R equals V squared over R. And again, this is on your reference tables. Let's take a look at an example. How much current flows through a 60 watt light bulb when it is connected to a circuit with a voltage of 110 volts? Since we know the power and the voltage and we're looking for current, we can use the form of the equation P equals VI. If we plug in our givens, we can find out that the current through the light bulb is 0.55 amps. Here's another example. A typical hair dryer has a power of 1875 watts. If it is connected to a 220 volt source, what is the hair dryer's resistance? Again, if you're not sure where to start, make a list of givens to figure out which equation to use.